recording this. Uh, I also want to tell you as I record it, I don't do anything for more than an hour. So, you know, likely at the top of the hour or the bottom of the hour, depending on how we start, we'll take a break, you know. You know, somewhere after 50 minutes, 55 minutes, we'll just take two or three minute break to relax, get up and stretch. You always need to stretch and I'm sitting way too much these days right now. Okay, let me take you on a tiny tour of my space, but it's not very impressive. Basically, I just have a piece of paper set up under my phone. It's kind of a document camera and that's where we're gonna write stuff. And probably that's the fastest way for me to communicate with you because I can write faster than I can type than I can write on a computer screen. So the other useful thing here is I will scan these notes after our session and post them. So if we wrote anything clever or if your question got answered, well, they're gonna be in the notes and they're gonna be scanned and posted afterwards. I also have somewhere, and I'm gonna to have to find it. I'm sitting in my basement right now, a whiteboard on the wall. And maybe it's useful and maybe it's not. I don't wanna stand in front of the whiteboard and talk at you, but maybe there would be a time where it's useful. I can't fill it up with equations. I guess I was just doodling before class today at some of the things that we'll see. and. If I have a picture or two on the board, I can flash to the board. Maybe that's useful. I think as I share problems with you elsewhere on our website or in videos, then I might write them on the board or you might even see me writing them on the board. But those will be separate recordings somewhere else. So I've got my whiteboard, got my paper. That's gonna be where we spend a great deal of our time. Got my face. I'm kind of stuck with his face. So I'm in my basement, as you can tell from some of the pipes in the background. And it's not the quietest place, but it's probably the quietest place in the house. You guys can join from a computer, you can join from a tablet, you can join from a phone, but probably the best experience that you'll have is on your computer. You know, best as terms of bandwidth, connectivity, and best as far as type in questions to me or sending me questions. So that's just a tiny tour of my space. Uh, and I don't mind stopping and taking any question you wanna ask, but, and I, I don't require you to show your face. I'm not really excited showing you my face because I never know where to look on the computer or the camera. And I don't want to be looking at you the other way. So generally, I just put up an image instead of a video on my face. A lot of people do the same. If you just have your name in your window, that's okay with me. Is there any question I can just answer for you about connectivity, about coming to the meeting, participating in the meeting? Also, if questions come to you five minutes later, even if we're on another topic, again, just shoot them in the chat and I'll address them as I see them. Okay, next space is our website. So I'm gonna share screen with you, just a second. And you've got a couple emails from me already. So you may have visited our website, but I just wanna show you some of the highlights and pop onto my website. So now I am sharing my website and I'll hit some questions where we're going. And I don't mind pausing to read the questions. Uh, from Austin, same meeting ID for every class. Yes, with one caveat. If you notice the Invitations I issued to you were for only for the first two weeks because I want to make sure everything is working, everything is happy. If I put up calendar invites for the whole semester and then something went wrong and you're taking them down, 
I just wanted to do trial invites for the first two weeks. And then after that, I'll issue invitations for all the rest of our sessions. So very likely at that time, the meeting ID will be permanent. I gave you a password to join this meeting, but if you follow the link, you probably didn't have to use the password. But I might, you know, the password is kind of embedded in the link. So it's a good question. Right now, just the first two weeks are in one session. Uh, Zachary, participation points. This is very unusual this semester. I don't have to tell you that. Uh, in the winter, if you were attending classes at any school, you know, you had some experience and you had some face-to-face -face time with somebody. And when everything went into remote mode, at least you had some relationship with people. Maybe you took a class in the spring. I taught a class in the spring. It was very short, very focused. And everybody got done everything they needed to do. This class, this semester is new for me and for you in the sense that from start to finish, we're online. I would much rather talk to you face to face. I'd much rather work with you face to face. But even in our best day, I can't say to everyone that they must be present or that they must be attending a session. So to Zachary's participation points, I'll say, your attendance in this class and your participation in this class is doing the homework and the homework system and once a week submitting a written problem. That is attendance. No other participation points than that. And we'll go over your grade in a second. Uh, September 7th meeting possibly was canceled, taken off the calendar because that would be the Labor Day break. So we meet Monday and Wednesday this week. We only meet Wednesday next week. You will start using your text immediately. Just answering the next question. But you have this great advantage in the XYZ homework system and any homework system that's legitimate in general. You can go to that website get into our class and start working on the assignments immediately. They give you like a two week grace period. So I'll show you the information you need to get in to the course, even if you don't have your book or access pass yet. Okay, got it, got it. You may not have your book, but once you are in the system, and let's make it a goal that by the end of today, you get in the system or send me a note and I'll help you. Once you're in the system, you are accessing the book online. So you will get to see the book. I'll show you a physical copy of the book in a few minutes. Okay, those are great questions. And this is another kind of illustration. I really do need your questions to run this class. Again, face to face, I got all kinds of cues from you. You know, the happy look, the bored look, the sad look, the quizzical look. I got it all when I'm looking at you. Here, you know, kind of challenged that I have none of that. So just bring questions to me if they flash by in the chat window and I miss them. You can bring them again, but I think so far we're up to date. Let me look at my website here. I've sent you the link to this website, Dave's Web Corner. Very, very Spartan. Just, I don't like decorations. I don't like buzzing icons floating around a web page. I just give you what you need here. And my goal is to give you what you need so that if you had to consume this even on a phone, it would be doable. So I want you to have access to everything you need all the time, you know, within reason. So this is our homepage that I've sent you a couple emails into. I kind of summarize week one. I kind of 
introduce you, talk about the textbook system, and we'll talk about some of this trigonometry in a little bit. Other important things that you'll see in week one, and you'll always see on our homepage, you know, next week the homepage will point to week two. I do have virtual office hours, and I will not issue calendar invitations to that because I don't want to clog up your calendars, however you manage them. These links right here will send you to the Zoom meeting room for virtual office hours. So if you want to execute one of these links on the appropriate day, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, appropriate time, then you'll go to the meeting room. I'll admit you, you'll kind of be in our office hours. Uh, if the office hour times look a little bit raggedy here, like 10 to 1040, it's because of we're not doing everything by the clock in a physical situation. So these are the times that I have available to meet with you. I should always be online at these times. I keep the appointments very well. If I was ever not available for a time, I would send the class an email letting them know. Uh, next place that you should pay attention to is we have two drop boxes set up. If you wanna just submit a written question or later when you submit a written assignment. And the idea here is I don't mind you sending emails to me asking me questions. It's just, it's really hard to type math to me. It's hard to read when someone types a math answer to you. So if you have a question and you just have it written on a piece of paper, snap a picture, click that link, all you're gonna do is submit that file to me. And then it comes to my email box. Uh, I don't know what the value of a demonstration is here. Let me just send a little picture. And that's not a math problem. It's just a kind of a cute picture. And then you put in your name, you put in your email address. And the idea here is like you get a receipt. So if it was an assignment, you would say, yes, I uploaded the assignment. It's got a date stamp, it's got a time stamp, and you're covered. See, so you'll see this screen after you submit something. And in my email box, I'll see the time that that file was submitted. Let me go backwards. So two folders here for you to drop stuff in if you want to. Uh, when we submit written assignments, maybe exams later, use the assignments folder. I'd like you to practice not just shooting images, but actually creating PDF papers from images and giving yourself good lighting, good writing, bold, readable things when you submit an assignment, and I'll give you some tips later. But when we're, not, we're not near an assignment today, so no rush to demonstrate that. Here's the schedule for the whole course. You know, just roughly sections we're gonna cover. And exam scheduled in week nine, exam scheduled in week 16, basically. That's the schedule we're gonna keep to. We have time to review talking about two or three sections a week is not overdoing it, except for the natural first day talking, which you know, kind of eats into our time here, but we'll see what we can do. But you can click on week one here, and go to week one. You can click on week one in this list, and go to week one, and I'll just do that very briefly. And week one will tell you what we're doing here in week one. Outline, objectives, homework. So you always have a note here telling you where and what your next homework is. We're not close to homework right now, written homework. And you've got a week or so to work on the first few sections of this XYZ homework. But get into the system today so you're 
comfortable and you're able to tell me if you've got any issues. Then every week I got a handout section. And there I will post the scanned notes from the session by the date of the session. If you were in my office hour, you know, today there was not anybody available for office hours, that's okay. Probably didn't have any burning questions yet. But if I make any notes in the office hours, then I will scan those notes and post them here. Other handouts that are useful to you are linked to right here. And some of these handouts will be useful to you in this first week. So click on a handout, just here's a discussion about angles. You're gonna to go to a Google Drive. You're gonna see this file called angles.pdf. And just here's a few notes about the vocabulary of angles. And so this is just like, me talking to you, some of the things that were said in the book. Some of these things may not have been said the same way in the book, but this is just me saying, you know, what do I think is important about that first section? <laughs> I, uh, I'll, th I'll think about it, Bryce, but uh, yeah, I probably have to like level up pretty seriously before I actually went golfing with anybody. <laughs> I'm pretty safe with my son, but even my son beats me. Okay, so you got the plan here. Here's some handouts. You get the handout you want. And uh, here's some trig identities. You know, this is the beginning of a formula page. Might look at some of this later today, possibly, certainly Wednesday. So I could provide direct individual links. I'm not sure how I want to run that. Uh, I try to move more things to Google Drive more and more, just because I got this personal thing that says, the stuff we do should not behind, be behind a login, should not be behind a password. Pretty much everything I do and teach at Delta College is in the open. And I teach classes from this class to the last class. I, I like to teach lots of different classes, but I don't like putting things behind passwords if I can avoid it. So if you go to our D2L site, all you're gonna see is a welcome message that sends you to our website that we're looking at now. I will not post anything in D2L. I want everything to be available to you without having to log in. Okay, so Lots of good handouts here, you just saw them. The video section, so right now we are recording video and then later this afternoon, I can't say exactly when, uh, I'll link you to the video from this session. Maybe I'll create some other video sometime for demonstrating a problem or something. Uh, technology we're gonna use in this class, we're gonna go through our syllabus in a second in a little more detail, but Calculator would be handy. TA-84 would be a good calculator. Uh, I'll demonstrate on my paper with my TA-84 once in a while. But Desmos is also a very cool website. And if you've never used Desmos before, sometime this week I'll give you a demonstration. The basic idea being that it's kind of like a graphing calculator. And in some ways, more powerful or useful than a graphing calculator. Doesn't have all the functions that TI-84 has on it, but it has quite a few, and they're pretty effective. Uh, not the least of which is color, and the ability to turn things on and off easily, but also the ability to manipulate things easily. When you're looking at this Desmos screen right here, you see at the top where it says log in or sign up? You do not have to create an account to use Desmos. You just go desmos.com, and you can create whatever you want to create. But if you sign up for an account, it's free. I hate multiplying accounts. So I'm not telling you to sign up for an account. But if you created yourself an account and you were doing something on the screen and it wasn't working or you wanted to ask a question, see right here, you could share it with me if you were logged into your account. You just share this with me, copy, 
email, whatever you want to do. And then you could send me an email. Uh, Dave, this point is not working in Desmos. Can you tell me what's wrong? Then I'll look at it and say, ah, oh, you forgot a comma or forgot a parentheses or something. So if you have an account there, it's really easy to share these. And that's how I got to this page. I just have an account and I linked you to a Desmos page. Here's another Desmos page we'll talk about later this week. So that's almost better than the calculator, although sometimes calculator is going to be useful. Uh, when we have information about exams, we'll post it here. Somewhere in the next first week or so, I might give you some tips about exams. So this is a scan of what one week looks like. And I've got week all the way to 16. 15 weeks in the semester, but remember there's two half weeks. Next week is a half week, Thanksgiving's a half week. So I just go by the calendar and call them 16 weeks on the calendar. I have outlines set up for every week, but I don't have assignments filled in yet and fill those in as we go. So you can scan, but some things don't have anything to show you, like week nine when we're doing review and exam. Okay, got it, got it. Uh, Excellent question. TI-83 is perfectly okay for this class and just about any other class. I mean, when you get into, you can take statistics someday, you can do an 84. 83 would still work. 83 is just a little bit older, but it's still very good. So thank you. Thank you, Haley. Okay, that's our weekly schedules. You know where to find them. Let's take a look at resources. Resources is kind of bare right now because we haven't done very much, but here's the plan for the resources page. You're going to say, where was that handout? Was that handout week three? What was week three? You know, I'm going to throw handouts, videos, images at you, and then you're going to forget which week it was in. I'm going to forget which week it's in. But what I'll do on the resources page is kind of put everything I post. So outline homework handouts video, for example, homework. When we get into it, there's the due dates of every homework and the due dates of every XYZ homework. So after I post the homework and the answer, you could go here and click on the link to see the answer. Before the answer is posted, you could click on the link to get the homework problem. We'll talk about homework a little more later. So the idea here on the resources page is just to make sure you have everything accumulated. You know, some of the handouts, notes, announcements, graph paper. Need some graph paper for this week? Need some graph paper in the course? Actually, I just created some graph paper that you can use. So you could go, again, you're going to be shot to a Google Drive, and you're going to see some graph paper you could download, print, whatever you need to do. Okay, so you can explore this as you wish. Here's the handouts we're using in week one. Here's some other handouts I'll show you pictures of later. Uh, if you want to see a collection of all the class videos every day as we go along. Now, I got several classes working here so you know dates and times sometimes refer to other things we're in a zoom meeting if you want to learn a little bit more about zoom there's the questions folder the assignments folder if you're trying to submit questions or assignments to me these are two programs i recommend adobe scan and apple notes both of them can be on your phone whatever phone you have smartphone so that's an easy way adobe scan or apple notes just snap a picture a piece of paper Automatically, it's PDF, and then you just send it to me in an email on your phone. Okay, so not a lot of action right now on the resources page, just because we haven't collected a lot. Here's an overall course outline. I think it takes up too much space, so I'm trying to think about what I'm going to do with that. But resources just to collect everything we distribute. So far, so good. Let's check the syllabus as quickly as we can, and then other questions you can pop into the chat as they occur to you. So syllabus is just a record of how we're running the course. So here's the course. 
instructor, expectations, and grading. Course is pretty simple. It's math 121, plane trigonometry. You're in one section or another. That's what I mean by pretty simple. I have invited everyone to these meetings, and I explained that in an email that previously the second section was meant to be face to face. So I knew that anybody that signed up for the second section or got transferred into it, you know, kind of was aiming for face to face possibly. So let's create the virtual meetings. Okay, that's the best we can do. But then I didn't want to short anybody just because they went to the online class. You know, I can't say, oh, you signed up for online, you can't come to our meetings. No, everybody can come to both the meetings. Anybody in either section can come to the meetings or not come to the meetings as your schedule allows. There is no presence requirement or that you have to log into these meetings. This is plain trigonometry. It's a very practical course. You can see that on our homepage, the description I gave you, and the two sections. And this is our official course website, what I'm showing you right now. You can log into D2L if you like for your other courses, but for this course, you'll find nothing there. Got it, got it. Uh, this is another good thing. Uh, sometimes I know you get popped in or out of this meeting, so I keep my eye on that. I'm sorry if I missed that, but a couple people bumped out and then I have to readmit them. So I got to keep my eye on the participants list just to help people if they get bumped out of the meeting to readmit them. Uh, the prerequisite is intermediate algebra and you can, you you may have done that in another school. You may have done that previously, but basic intermediate algebra. You can check the course description for what's going on right there. Here's our book, Trigonometry, X Y Z Homework Systems, and I mentioned Desmos, Apple Notes, and Adobe Scan. Uh, recorded videos. I'll just take the questions as they come. They will be linked to from this website each week and in the resources page. And most likely I'm gonna host them on a YouTube channel. And I have that set up. I'm just gonna do some more experiments with that before I uh, post the links. So a very good question. Thank you, Evans. The link to the trigonometry book takes you to the publisher's website and if you're a student, you click on the student side. There's our book. Printed version, $50. Printed loosely, $40. But the all access pass is what you need. If you buy the book, printed or loose leaf, you get the all access pass. The all access pass gets you to the homework system. If you buy the all access pass alone, then you get into the homework system and you get the book and you get the videos, you get their whole product. This is the first time I'm using this system, but I really like it because they're very practical. And I've met Charles a couple times in other contexts. He did a very nice job of producing something practical and useful. And as you get into it, you know, very nice videos, nicely written book, very nice examples. So you evaluate and look at it, but you can get the book from the website today for $50. Delta College's bookstore is selling this book for $49.50. I'm not sure how they did that, but I've checked with them and that's actually what they did. I don't think they bought the loose leaf version, but either way, any printed version, get the all access pass, if you just want the all-access pass and consume the book electronically, that is fine with me. I usually, when the computer fails, like to have a paper book in my hands. And the book, I'll show you a picture of what it looks like later. Now, that's the front cover right there. Let me go backwards and take you to the homework system. And the homework system login page is looking like this. And I don't mind logging in, but you're, 
I'm only going to see my account. I'm not going to see generic students account per se. Let's not speak my password. How many of you speak your password as you type it? But basically, when you get connected to our course, this is what you'll see. Basically, a calendar, sections to work on every Tuesday. I'll tell you why I pick Tuesday later. And just outlines giving you what you have to do when it's due. I make these things available a week or two before we discuss them. So I don't mind if you work ahead at all. If you had time for that, I don't require you to work ahead. But basically what happens is in the first week, we're talking about August 31, September 2, then September 9, we're gonna talk about sections one through five. And then one week later, you're gonna hand in on this homework system, sections one through five, you're gonna work through the system. Get into the system, try it, send me the problems. If you get caught somewhere, I'll help you out. But my idea here is we'll finish talking about 1.5 on Wednesday, September 9. Remember, Monday, September 7 is a holiday. And after September 9, you, know, you really should be digging into this the whole time, right? But maybe you come back on the 14th and say, wait a minute, I don't understand how he was doing that. So the idea behind the Tuesdays is that all these things are due seven days after we stop talking about them. But I want to give you that Monday to ask questions too. Oh, no, you can, uh, thank you, excellent question, Gabriel. No, you just work through the section, do the problems, they're recorded. So you don't have to wait until a day. I'm just saying by September 15, you should have completed these first five sections of homework in the book. And you can click on these, and then you get directed to that, except Right now, now, there's 20 questions in that section. And here's a sample question on the screen, right? But we're not inside your system, we're inside my system. You can get help with a video, you can get help by referring to the ebook. It's impossible for me to describe all the nice things he has here. So you dig into it, some of your questions as you go. Uh, full credit for the questions if you answer correctly in those three chances. Yes, I believe that is the case, although I won't commit to it because I don't know everything about how the system works. But you will not get the same question twice in a row, possibly. You know, Nathan, that's an excellent question, but we're going to have to experience it. Let's experience it and then we'll know for sure. because they're naturally gonna switch questions on you. You don't get the questions that the next person gets, stuff like that. Uh, Austin, weekly quizzes, anything else? Nope, you have this homework in XYZ, you have the written homework, and then you have the exams. And we're about to see how those are weighted on the syllabus. So I just wanted to see you, let you see inside this system. It's very, you know, it's not, it's like, not decorative, it's not glitzy, it's just helping you check your basic points. Uh, I think there's flexibility on whether they're graded as we go or corrected all at the end. I think it's going to tell you the answer right or wrong after you do the question. And there may be some freedom in our settings but I, I can't swear that I know the answer right now. Like I say, you're working on this for a couple of weeks, although it's five sections and you say, here's 20 questions, here's 15 questions, here's 16 questions. You know, it's not just three questions and you're gone. But the questions are not trying to fool you or trick you. They're trying to check you on basic things. We'll come back and play with the system later. Maybe not today, but as you get further into it. It's pretty, 
pretty self-explanatory in that sense. You're just not seeing the things on the left side that I'm seeing because we're in, in instructor mode here right now. Okay, back and out, back and out. Try it, tell me what you think. There's our course number right here, 24158. That's what you need when it asks you, asks you what course you wanna be in. Okay, give it a shot. Uh, who's your instructor? David Redman. I taught at Delta College for a while. I teach just about every course and enjoy just about every course. If we were on campus, I'd be very happy to see you in my office. And really, they don't want anybody on campus unless they're teaching on campus. So I will not be available in my office this semester, but you do have these office hours. And if one of these wasn't excellent for you, then let's do an appointment. You know, just send me a time, you know, Dave, can we talk tomorrow at three? And I'll say, yeah, I'm available or no, I'm not available. How about five? And then I would send you an invitation to a meeting. So I can be flexible, but these are the times I'm guaranteed to be available. Easiest way to get a hold of me is email because I'm often online. So there's Delta College email address. Please use that. And I will use your Delta College email address just so I don't screw up and send something to a wrong address. Website, we've already given you a short tour. Again, office phone. If I was sitting in my office, I will not be sitting in my office. So really, email is the fastest way to contact me. If you had to mail something to me, as sometimes in a case on campus, people were mailing me books or something like that. There's an email, there's a mail address. Mail is still running at the college, but I'm going to be going to the college very irregularly. So don't mail something to me if it's urgent. Let's just go over expectations. Just by their very nature, they're my expectations. You have your own expectations that I will honor within reason. But these are the things that I know that I'm gonna do for you. Uh, I answer your emails in the order they're received. And this is really important, especially in this situation that we're in, you know, you know, it's not like you don't want the loudest person to get served, right? No, that's why I want you to use a Delta College email. Got it in my inbox. Know when it came, know who was first, know who was second. I will answer your emails in the order I get them. And it's very usually within 24 hours. I will respond to your Delta College email address. Even if you sent it to me in another email address, I will respond in your Delta College email. So just for keeping track of things, get in the habit of using your Delta College email address for class business. Definitely read through the book. Sections we're going to cover each week before we meet. You, you may not have had this warning, except for my emails for the past couple of weeks. So, you know, read through sections one through three, not because you're going to understand everything you write, but because you'll make a note of your questions. We'll go back to week one. I list recommended problems for every section. In each section, I picked out 10 problems that I thought were representative. And they're just recommended problems to test you. And you can say, how am I doing? Can I do this? You know, maybe you want to try some of them before you go into the homework system because you don't want to use up chances in your homework system, right? So I'll show you the recommended problems again in a second. Class sessions, we're going to do a combination of presenting material and demonstrating problems except for today, which I understand is a very bad example because I'm just talking at you. I will record the sections. I will scan any written notes that we make and I post them. So again, this is why I'm keying on your questions. If you bring your questions to me at the session, then you know I'm gonna write them on my pad of paper. I'm gonna get to them somehow. And once I get to them in this meeting or on this paper, then you got a written record and you got a video. So bring your questions, read the section, make a list of questions, bring the questions. We'll always reserve time at the beginning to get questions on the table. Office hours are open and handled the same way, except I will not record the office hours because you know I don't want to get obsessive about recording just individual conversations. Uh, another question that comes up sometimes, 
the chat window is not hosted. I, in other words, <coughs> I'll have a record of the chat window after the session, but I will not have a record of any individual chats. You can message me individually. You can message each other individually. But unless a message comes to you or is initiated by you, it will not be saved in your chat. And the same applies to me. So if you, you can have a private conversation, I have no problem with that at all. I won't see it. It won't be recorded. Only private conversations that come to or from me. So I'm not gonna post the chat. I'm just gonna use the chat questions to answer your questions. Notes from office hours will be posted again. Bring your questions to the office hours. Okay, back to here. Uh, XYZ homework. This is a computer-based homework. I gave you a sneak peek. It's basically working with you on, do you got the basic computations? Do you got the basic procedures? And, you know, not overly sneaky questions, although some questions are harder than others, but focused on basic computations and procedures. Here's the thing that a computer cannot do for you. The most important thing I could teach you is how to write and how to answer questions completely. And if I had not my way, you could submit 10 questions a week and you'd become expert writers. Neither you nor I have that time. I couldn't do justice to reading 10 questions a week from every person. So I wanna teach you how to write mathematics neatly so that people understand you basically in self-defense so that you convince people that you have the answer. So every week I'm gonna give you one exercise to hand in writing, mostly to help you practice writing and making complete solutions. Again, the schedule of when these are due is on each weekly page and in the resources. So this week itself, no, you're not handing in any paper. Oh, uh, very good question from Austin. Yes, absolutely. If you think that something is wrong in the system, XYZ system, absolutely tell me. Now, I think if you tell me the problem, I can go in on your side. Well, I can go in on my side and see what happened, right? But if you're nervous about anything, just snap a screenshot at it. You know, you gave it the right answer and the machine said no. I haven't seen that happen yet in XYZ, but I know it happens. I've seen it happen in other systems. Remember, this is the first time I'm using the system. So absolutely, you can just show me if you think something's wrong. Thank you, Austin. It's a good question. Okay, so you can work on the written homework. And I don't mind if you guys get together, work together on anything when you're doing the written homework, a little bit like Austin's question. I want you to challenge yourselves. Like, I don't understand why you said that, or that's not true. Well, I'll say it politely, but I don't mind if you collaborate when you're working on those written things. And my only requirement is that you have to write the solution in your own hand, you know, you, with your own fingertips if you're typing it, but writing is probably faster. Uh, exams we will arrange to have and those will be individual only work. So I have two exams here. We're gonna talk about the philosophy of the exams later, but week nine is the first exam, so we have time to get to that. Basically the exams, I want you to focus on important concepts and exercises. This is you showing me on the exams that you can explain these things. That's the goal. Technology, you don't need to purchase anything. You can use your graphing calculator or Desmos, and I'd be perfectly happy if you use Desmos all semester, or even on an exam, you're gonna have access to a computer in that sense. Sometimes a graphing calculator is just handy because if you know, you're know you at the beach and you don't have your computer, which is natural, you got your graphing calculator. So if you wanna do some problems, pull out your graphing calculator. Uh, you do want to be able to learn to draw effectively 
diagrams and graphs by hand. But the beautiful thing about Desmos, you mean your graphing calculator, Desmos though especially, is you can make a really nice graphic, really nice diagram, and then you can just print it out, and that's part of your answer. You do want to practice drawing by hand too, because it might say to you someday for some reason, draw this by hand. Show me that you can draw this neatly by hand. So practice doing graphs both in the diagram by hand and technology. If I demonstrate stuff, I'll demonstrate a TI-84 calculator at Desmos. Again, we'll get more into this when we approach your written homework, but I would like you to focus on getting your homework that you write down for me as one PDF file dumped into our assignments folder. And we'll get into naming later, but I just got a lot of people to keep track of. So if you could name the file last name, first name, homework number, Math 121, your section number, Yes, I can figure all these things out eventually, but just make it faster for me, and that makes it faster for you. Uh, still write your physical name on your paper. We'll talk more about preparing written exercises later. Uh, just for silly utility, I just set every deadline to 11.59 p.m. <laughs> so I don't have to remember a different time, whether you're a morning person or evening person. Okay, so uh, late written homework, late exams not accepted. In the XYZ system, I left something turned on there that you got late passes. Not a lot, but you know, I know something weird happens sometime. So there are three late passes assigned to each of you in the system. And what they do is they extend the deadline by 24 hours. So if some kind of accident happens, connection accident, whatever. Uh, if you are in this case where you're dealing with medical issues, as many people are, definitely talk to us and we'll help you out through the Disability Resources Office. Uh, grading, very short, mercifully. What are you handing in to me? XYZ homework, written homework, exam one, exam two. And those are worth 50% of your grade, 10%, 20%, and 20%. You know, whatever percentage you have on the XYZ homework, I multiply it by 50%. I'll give you an example down here. And I'm going to make this really direct. You know, in the end, you got 81.77%, well, you got 82%. And by the chart, that's a B. Read through this carefully. This is too fast for me to flash this at you like this. But read through this carefully. And you can shoot me questions in email or otherwise as we go along. If we were doing this in a classroom, I might have done this faster or easier. But it does take time to go through these things, and they're all valuable. So now I'm hoping you know, that you believe why I want to deliver things and how I want to deliver things on the site. And so here's a situation. So like everybody needs a break. Like I said, I don't do anything for more than an hour. Get up, stretch your legs, five minutes. Let's come back at 129. Well, by my clock, it's 124. If you want to dump some questions in here, while you're stretching your legs or something that's occurred to you while we talked about this. Then we'll come back in five minutes and answer your questions, but then we'll actually talk about math. So I apologize if I'm too legalistic in this first section, but that's just the way things start. Under these circumstances, take five. I'm going to stop this sharing and I'm gonna mute my microphone. You're welcome to do the same, but come back in five minutes.
Okay, let me pop back in here. Uh, just picked up a question over the break, Ashton. I am sure it's saved as you go, and you don't have to do an entire section at once. I mean, that's pretty much standard operating procedure for all these things. Again, I've never completed anything like that from your side in this system, but I'm pretty certain that you just complete it as you go. Okay, so we've done a pretty good job so far, even though I wish I had less time on these two things, but I really wanna put this in your mind. Uh, and I also like making shocking statements all the time. I have no ability to teach you trigonometry. I'm absolutely worthless. You have to learn how to do trigonometry. And I can answer any question you ask, but I can't answer any question that I don't know about. So the purpose of that website, recordings, videos, papers, whatever, is literally to answer your questions. So you bring the questions, we'll get them covered. I'll show you how to do anything. But if you can't ask it, I can't answer it. So that's the purpose of the website. Let's talk a little bit about section 1.1, 1.2. This, by the way, I just flashed that under the camera. That is a copy of the book and doesn't fit under my document camera beautifully. I gotta redesign my document camera, but you get a little scratch off, like here's your access code if you get a physical book. So that's basically what that's looking like. What is trigonometry? And I can go back to my website. Trigonometry, literally. Three angle measurement. Trigonometry. It's literally about triangles. And triangles are exciting, triangles are not exciting. Well, that's your call. But the concept here is how do you learn to move in the plane? You know, if you and I are sitting on a ruler, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm here and you're there, it's easy for me to describe how you can come and see me. I want you to take three steps left. In, in one dimension, what do we got? We got distance, how far apart we are. And we got concepts of left and right. And that's good enough to measure anything you want. And that's good enough to get any person from point A to point B. If we all lived on rulers, we don't live on rulers. We live... Well, let's take one dimension at a time. Second dimension is like a plane, a coordinate plane, like the map of a city. Now, in the mass sense, I know you don't live on a plane. Even the surface of the Earth is not a flat plane. If I was the first person to break that to you, I'm sorry. But it's essentially a plane. Like if you look at the map of a city, you could just pretend that the city is flat and these streets go this way and that way. And, and you can tell people how to get from one place to another. And you still have a notion of distance. You can still lay down a very long ruler and tell someone how far apart they are. But you don't have left, right. Really, maybe I've left, right, up, down. But you wouldn't want to tell me how to visit your workplace by saying, uh, let's go that way and then go up here. I mean, maybe the streets in your city are not laid out left, right, up, down, right? But you could tell me how to get to your location with an idea called direction. 
and direction can be independent of left, right, up or down. But direction itself, whether it's that way or that way, it's pointing somewhere. And I need a way to describe direction. Well, I describe direction with an angle. I name that angle alpha, lowercase Greek letter. And this concept of how I relate left, right, up, down to direction, that naturally forms a three-sided figure. It's a triangle. So, now this is simplistic, but the concept is super powerful. If you know everything there is to know about triangles, you can control a lot of very important processes, industrial processes, practical processes, engineering processes, processes in science. So trigonometry is literally everything you need to know about triangles. And there's probably things about triangles I don't know. So that is an awesome advantage in this class. It's not like, oh, we're gonna do 52 things in this class. No, we're doing one thing and that's triangles. Now we're gonna, yeah, I don't want to overgeneralize. We're going to do a little more in triangles, but everything in the end comes back to triangles and can be understood if you understand triangles. So let me show some words at you how we're going to talk about triangles. If I talk about triangles, I have to talk about measuring them, right? So let's have a concept called how we measure triangles. If you're facing that way, and you make one complete revolution, you know, turn yourself around, dance and something like that. We measure triangles and angles and degrees. If you turn 360 degrees, you say this in English, do a 360. Do a 360 means you turned complete circle once around. Do a 180. If I do a 180, it means I turned the opposite direction. And you've heard words like a right angle. A right angle means you've gone completely unrelated to your original direction. A right angle is like half, you stopped going east, west, and you went north, south. That'd be a right angle. And right angle is 90 degrees. But when people want to tell you about a right angle, since they're so special, they put a little square in the corner. So when you see a square in the corner, that's another way of saying 90 degrees. And it's also called a right angle. Now, let's just do some quick, fun trigonometric facts. And I'm just scribbling more or less randomly, doing some vocabulary from the first section with you. And you can pop questions in anytime you want. Let me draw a triangle on the paper. And it's got three angles. The angles could be different, not different. Or I could draw a triangle a little bit larger here. I don't have to commit to that whole line. Here's one angle. Here's a second angle. This is a Greek letter beta. Looks like a capital B, but it's got a tail on it. Here's a Greek letter, gamma. I'm gonna draw that picture larger. But here's a powerful fact about all triangles. If you add the three triangles, angles together, you always do an about face. You always go 180 degrees. And there's a really simple way for me to show you that on this paper, but I'm going to draw a bigger picture. And I'm going to draw two lines that are parallel to each other. I'm going to name these things bigger, alpha, beta. Sometimes people put a little arc in the corner to show you the angle. And sometimes they put two arcs in the corner just to say, well, these two angles are not the same. This is a different one. And same thing for three arcs, but let's not overdo it. You know, one arc, two arc, three arcs, that's fine. This is the Greek letter gamma. 
just looks like a kind of a y-ish thing but let's check this out if these two lines are parallel right here then this angle alpha also shows up right here because it's like the same corner from the opposite perspective. This angle beta, two strokes, shows up right here. Because this line cuts the two parallel lines and cuts out the same angle on either side. But now you see what I just did. Alpha plus beta plus gamma is like doing a 180. So when I say alpha plus beta plus gamma is 180, that sounds like the silliest thing, like, oh yeah, everybody knows that. But it actually turns out to be really powerful. Every triangle angles out up to 180 every time, all day long. Okay, let's talk about some other triangles, special triangles. Most important special triangle is the right triangle. So when you have a 90 degree angle in the triangle, and now named angles, let's name sides, A, B, C. Then, I don't know, everybody has heard this somewhere before, A squared plus B squared is C squared, famous Pythagorean theorem. And the basic idea here, vocabulary, the two right angled sides are called legs. The C is called the hypotenuse. You can check this out in the book. But for a right triangle, you can always find the length of a third side if you know two sides by using the Pythagorean theorem. And it's pretty easy to show you why that's true, although we don't go around proving things all day long in this class because we can't cover everything we need to prove. But if I drew that triangle four times on this piece of paper, do you see what I create? A, B, A, B, A, B. And this hypotenuse is the longest side of the right triangle. It shows up in these four places. Well, this is a square because A and B add up to 90 degrees. Why do A and B add up to 90 degrees? Because the whole triangle adds up to 180. So that makes this a right angle, right angle, right angle, right angle. Four right angles, same length on each side, that's a square. So let's add up this giant square. A plus B is the length of each side. And then let's add up the four triangles. Area of a triangle is one half AB. And the square in the middle, which is C squared. Do you know what happens? Now I'm going to do a little algebra. Maybe you're rusty on algebra. Maybe I'm rusty. But when you square this, you foil it out. I could show you that another time if you have a question. Four times one half is two AB. There's a C squared. And you have 2ab on both sides, cancels out. That's how I know that a squared plus b squared is c squared. So this is very powerful. It's called the Pythagorean theorem. Oh, sorry about that. Yep, got to move. I got to keep my eye on the screen and the paper. And I'm not bad at doing that. Just I've had a few weeks off after that summer class, so I'm out of practice. So nothing crazy startling but nothing out of your reach. I mean, when someone says theorem in math, some people get all nervous, like saying, ooh, ooh, that's deep stuff. I can't do that. I can't think that. No, theorem in math just means fact. Here's a fact, and this is the reason why the fact is true. That's all you have to do. I'm not gonna make you reproduce this, but I just, I want you to believe it. And I can tell you to believe it and, don't ask any questions, or I can tell you believe and show you why. Got it. <coughs> Let me switch to my whiteboard. It's not exactly what we're doing here, but maybe whiteboard is happy sometimes. 
so I just scribbled this stuff down before we got started today. You know, 360, 180, 90 degrees. You could imagine that half of 90 degrees is 45 degrees. Okay, that's important. But you could you could describe turning by degrees, and you're pretty used to describe turning by degrees anyway. You know, if you're a snowboarder and you you did a 540, you know what that means. This concept that if you add three angles, you always get 180, no matter what triangle you're dealing with. That's true for any triangle. This concept that's only true for right triangles, that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, that's special. And you say, is that true for any triangle in general? No, it's not, but we will modify this statement later. So for general triangles, the Pythagorean theorem, if I can say it like this in mathematics, is almost true. It's not true, but it can be fixed. But the start is the Pythagorean theorem. Now let's do some other vocabulary words. When you have two angles lined up doing a 180, you know, like alpha and beta, right here, when two angles add up to 180, they're called supplementary. Because it's like saying B supplements alpha, beta supplements alpha, beta makes up the rest of the 180. So if you hear someone say supplementary, they mean the two angles add up to 180. Very important word, complementary. If you hear someone say complementary, it means the two angles add up to 90. And in a sense, I use that in the Pythagorean theorem proof. Do you see two angles adding up to 90? If you looked at it from a different point of view, in a right triangle, the other two angles always add up to 90. Why? Because you've already bit off 90 degrees at this right angle. So when you draw a right triangle, the two angles that are not the right angle, you naturally call them complementary. Not complementary as, gee, you have a nice shirt on. Complementary means they make up the rest, the rest of the 90 degrees. Okay, there's no way I could tell you everything you need to know quickly and on a piece of paper. But that's a scan of most of the things in the first section. Let me go back to my paper, excuse me. So what you need to do is get used to that vocabulary. Now, I said right triangle is famous. There are other famous triangles, and I've got them prepared for you in the handouts. Here's one famous triangle. What happens if you have a right triangle and the legs have the same length? This length and this length are the same. Well, these two angles, alpha and beta, add up to 90. But if these legs are the same, then just by symmetry, these angles are the same. So I can properly mark them with one arc. They are the same angle. They are half of 90 degrees because they add up to 90 and they're the same. 45, 45, 90 triangle. That's a famous triangle because it's easy to measure the legs. They're both the same. And it's easy to measure the hypotenuse. All you have to do is multiply the length of the leg by root two. If you weren't sure about that, you'd use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus A squared is C squared. Two A squared is C squared. C is square root of two A squared. Well, A squared is a perfect square. With root two, I could look it up on a calculator or something, you know, 1.414 something, but I'm happy saying root two A. So whenever you have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, for example, if I say to you, here's a 45, 45, 90, and this is seven and seven, you don't have to puzzle out the hypotenuse length. You don't even have to calculate it. You just say seven root two. 
Or if you have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, same angle, and this is 12, you automatically know what these two sides are by dividing by root two. If you go this way by multiplying by root two, then you can go this way by dividing by root two. And both of these sides are 12 over root two. Now you gotta be careful. Some people get upset if you put a radical in the bottom, some people don't. This book does a good job of saying either it's okay to leave the radical in the bottom or it's not okay to leave the radical in the bottom. That's called rationalizing the denominator. So if you met someone who didn't want to have a radical in the bottom, what you do is multiply both top and bottom by root two, and you get 12 root two over two, root two times root two is two. I'm doing a lot of fast math here, but you get six root two. That'd be the polite way to write 12 over root two without a denominator fraction. On our website, I have two handouts that show you how to, this is called rationalize the denominator. Check out those handouts. I give you examples and show you how to do it, but that's a quick example. I also apologize to you on the first day and for a little while, you know, some people have seen this, some people have seen that. I know you've done things like this maybe sometimes. My problem is I gotta get everybody kind of on the same page using the same words. So if I'm doing something you've done before, don't worry about it. There's other special triangles I want you to learn. So right triangle is special because it's really easy to find the length of the sides. Another famous triangle is called a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And that's also easy to find. Besides, this is a handout that's on the website. If you have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, then you can name the three sides just as fast as you name them here because the short leg is always half the hypotenuse and the long leg is always root three times the short leg. Let me give you an example. Let's say, I'm gonna draw this here. I can't draw 30, 60, 90 like perfectly. But let's say this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And if someone told you this is five, you can fill in the others in an instant because the hypotenuse is always twice the short side. And the long side, the long leg, is always root three times the short leg. I could do that with the Pythagorean theorem, but that's why this is called a special triangle. Because the ratios of the sides have this easy to remember pattern. Try it again. If I told you this was seven in a 30, 60, 90, I want you to immediately write down that this is seven over two, 3.5, but seven over two will do. It's half of the hypotenuse. And the long leg is a short leg times root three. Now, I could have a calculator tell me this is 3.5. I could have a calculator tell me what seven halves root three is, sure. But I know them. I didn't have to do any extra figuring. One more that sometimes people don't tell you about. So you got the 45, 45, 90, and then we're gonna cut it off there today. You got 30, 60, 90. After we cut it off today, I want you to explore the website. I want you to get yourself at least into the homework system or alert me if you can't. But here's another special famous triangle that people don't always tell you about. It's called the 1575-90. It would look about like this. Now, again, I'm not trying to draw 15 degrees beautifully, like I do 30 degrees fairly, but, oh, let's say that this is 15 degrees. This is not 
an easy, happy ratio like the first two. But there is a poetry to this ratio that you could learn and use to strengthen what you do. And that is in the hypotenuse, the ratio of the hypotenuse to the short side is this. The ratio of the hypotenuse to the long side is this. Root six minus root two, root six plus root two. First of all, you can say, you're crazy. How am I going to remember that? Well, I said there's a poetry to it. Do you see how these are almost the same number except one's plus and one's minus? Which one's longer? Well, don't ask me that question. The one with the plus sign is longer. I mean, you can ask me that question. I'm not, I'm not preventing you from asking. But you can remember these two. And how do you remember the six and the two? They differ by four. If you remember this ratio, then it's like you're going to be super powerful. And Kayla's question, problems in the book, questions on. Absolutely. So I'm going to cut it off here in a second. But find this handout on our website. And we haven't done the bottom part of it. We'll talk about that next time. But learn these ratios and these famous triangles. And you can quote things by memory and refer to a calculator a lot faster if you know these three triangles. Now, I will do one more thing to address Kayla's question. And that is, let me go back to our website. I'm going to share screen back to my website because Kayla asked about the recommended problems and stuff like that. We talked a little bit today about one, one, and one, two. I got to finish it up, but I kind of flopped around. Look at these recommended problems. I'm not going to go into a section and tell you to do one through 100 odd, but I am going to pick out the ones I think are key. So when I put down a recommended problem, these are gold. You want to know how to do these problems. And if you could do these problems before you start the XYZ homework, you're probably going to do the XYZ homework very well. And I focus your attention on these problems because I want you to solve them, not for points, not for reward, but just so you know that you've got the key concepts for the section. But I will do this for you. Do you see that these are links right here? Link 47. I will post the answer to a problem, like 1147. So here's 1147. It's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and they were just asking you to practice naming the sides. You understand? I want you to do these problems and check the answers. And if you looked at one of these recommended problems and didn't know how to do it, I want you to send me a question, either in the class or in between classes, find Dave, I don't know how to do 59. Can you show us how to do 59? Or can you post a solution to 59? Or maybe later you could post a solution to 59, give it to me and I'll post it and give you credit. Do you see how I have some of these turned on? 31, one, two, 31. Not a direct link, but a link to repository here in Google Drive. So here I do the problem for you very, very carefully. Maybe more writing than you need. Well, you judge after you get used to it. But you learn by imitating. How did you learn how to drive a car? You imitated someone driving a car. Mom, dad, brother, sister, aunt, uncle. You learn by copying people. You don't get grades by copying people. You learn by imitating people. And then you demonstrate it to me. So I've turned on a lot of these problems. I will not do that in the future, only by request. You tell me what you need to know. I'll tell you what the right problems are. You do them. You tell me if you need help on them. You got to let me inside your head at least that little bit. Okay, too much rambling, too much shouting at you. Uh, go ahead if you want to pop any question here. Uh, written homework assignments, what they will be, and maybe I'm not going to display one to you until Wednesday. There'll be a problem out of the book. 
or like one out of the book, but I thought, oh, let's, let's, let's change it up a little bit. It won't be a problem that's impossible or crazy to do, but what it is, is I want you to practice writing like I'm demonstrating this writing. So it'll be some problem out of the book, not an odd problem that you're gonna look up the answer to. No homework due Wednesday. Remember, this is week one outline. Always refer to the website. First written homework will be due on 9.15. You have to accomplish the first five sections of the XYZ homework again by 9.15. I know this is the damage that I do in the first session, too much rambling. Dig into the website, get your questions together, get your problem questions together. We'll talk about them next time. You've been very patient to listen to me for 90 minutes. I'll hang out here for a few more minutes, but you don't have to hang out here. Dig into the system, dig into the webpage. I'll see you Wednesday. And you can bring me questions, written, verbal, whatever you need done. We'll get it, we'll get it done. Okay, have a good day. It's a nice day outside. Go enjoy the sun. Uh, question, Gabriel. Yes, you can go to that website that I link you to, and you can get like a two-week guest access. Follow the link to that website, and somewhere on the page, there'll be a link like sign up. When you do the sign up, it'll say, do you have a code? If you don't have a code, it'll offer to let you in for like a week or 10 days, two weeks, two weeks maybe. What happens if hypotenuse changes to nine? Good question, we'll start there. Uh, let me see. How about, first of all, I'll answer your question by saying, what if it changes to eight? Well, then you're just gonna double these two people right here. So if it changed to nine, then you multiplied four by nine fourths. So you'd multiply each of these by nine fourths. But that's too much of a hurry, and I wanna share it with everyone. This is called similar triangles, proportionality. If you multiply one side by a number, you also multiply the other sides by the same number. That's called similar triangle. So Samuel, that might address your question, but we will do an example next time like that. Okay, I'm going to turn off the recording, but I'll hang out here for a second if you want to ask more questions.